Good morning. Thanks, you all. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I want to thank our uh, sponsors, Invitrogen, Genealogics, Thermo Fisher, and the Center for Translational Science. I want to thank our speakers, our star-studded panel for coming and uh, spending time with us and uh, showing us their fine talent. It's going to be an amazing day. And I want to thank you uh, for coming. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the, I'm Mark Chance, the director of the center. Uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the center in a few minutes as we get started. And then we'll turn it over to Rob Ewing to sort of lay the foundation of the uh, field of protein interactions for the, for the discussion and for the presentations we're going to have today. I'm especially looking forward to the panel session we're going to have at the end of the day where we can try to grapple with some of the major issues that are, that are facing the field. So um, I think Rob gave me this slide a while ago. I liked it. Is that true? You gave me this one, right? Yeah, I did. So um, for me, uh, this helps me remember what, what my business is, and that's I need to know where the proteins are. I need to know when they are going up and down. And the things that we really do best here uh, are in the upper right corner. We need to know their structure. And for us, that's not just what their modified forms or splice variants are. What's their actual three-dimensional structure as they interact with other proteins in the cell? And then lastly, in the bottom right is most of our focus for today is uh, what are their interactions? And uh, I can even explain this to my children. I say uh, proteins have their Facebook, and they have their friends, and they have their hubs, and they have their uh, dating interactions, and uh, all their little things, and they, they get that. Um, the development of these fields, or this field is represented by these various uh, pictorials, um, this is, a, this is a, a biochemistry, a fractionation problem in, in many cases. And, and uh, either, whether it's biochemical fraction, fractionation or, or a laser micro dissection, we have a handle on uh, getting the tissue that we want and um, uh, getting a sample that's sufficiently uh, simple that we can uh, interrogate the proteome. But as we know, there are so many isoforms, and we have to generate so many fractions to dig deeply that it's a, ch it's a challenge. When they are is a question of uh, good statistics and good experimental design. Um, what they are is a, is, a, is a great challenge in terms of the number of modifications we know we have to deal with and the numbers that we uh, are going to have to face. In terms of three-dimensional structure, there's been a tremendous revolution in what the community has been able to do through the Protein Structure Initiative over the last several years, such that uh, we are in a situation where we can realistically expect a valuable and accurate model for almost every domain uh, that is not a transmembrane domain and is not a disordered protein. Uh, and that has been coming, is coming, and the Protein Structure Initiative now going into its third phase called PSI Biology is really going to start interacting more closely with the community to use structural genomics to drive the solution of specific biological problems. Now domains are just a little shuffling uh, units that nature uses to execute certain functions. We know that those domains are organized in very complex higher level structures. And solving the structures of those entities is a huge challenge for the next several years. But we have the parts list now uh, in a fairly complete way for the first time. And so again, this last challenge is looking at these relationships uh, in time, in space, uh, in, in terms of their detailed 3D interactions. And I would say we don't, in, in the, there isn't an analogy to the protein structure initiative right now in terms of dealing with the complexities of protein interactions. We don't really have a, a unified uh, common way forward yet, or even the investment um, 
from the NIH or other funding agencies to really progress rapidly in this field. And I think not only do we have scientific challenges, we have challenges in terms of identifying what are some of the key problems and how to get there. And I hope that by the end of the day, maybe we'll have a little um, uh, better idea of what that is. So our center has not been here very long. We're only in our fifth year, and uh, we're having this symposium in part to celebrate that growth. Uh, the School of Medicine made a substantial uh, committed investment to, to build the center. There's probably $11 million spent so far. Uh, we're about 50 people, including eight primary faculty on the ninth floor of the BRB building. Uh, we have a lot of mass spectrometry instruments and proteomic systems installed and operating. And we have a very large structural biology program at Brookhaven Laboratories, uh, which does crystallography, structural mass spectrometry, and some other techniques. Um, we're used across the university, 30 departments and centers at Case at least, and through our Brookhaven facilities, uh, nearly 100 institutions worldwide use our, our cores. And the, the users, the staff, and the faculty, they are, they are just phenomenal. They've published uh, nearly 200 papers in each of the last two years. So they're very busy. But we're not uh, 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 just a core facility. We're really, our job is to be a collaborative engine to drive the science of the community in Cleveland and uh, nationally. So in order to do that, we've tried to reorganize the center to identify specific missions. We have a bioinformatics mission, which is very important. Macromolecular structure, especially as allied, as where experimental data is combined with computation. And then a more classical proteomics and genomics division. And each of these uh, platforms, expression proteomics, that's pretty typical for most centers, mass spectrometry, Bioinformatics and biostatistics we think is essential uh, uh, to be coupled with the proteomics mission. And systems biology data analysis is pro uh, along with interaction proteomics are probably two of the most rapidly growing um, platforms and, and technologies that the center is using. So to give you an example of how our structural and systems biology is, is playing out in terms of major work uh, at the university, uh, a problem uh, we're very interested in is HIV vaccine development, and one which, due to the failure of some major clinical trials, some AIDS vaccine several years ago has received great attention. Now, we know that the um, surface glycoproteins of HIV, GP120, GP41, they must interact with the T cells and the immune system, bind, and uh, membrane fusion occurs. So during that event, there's an opportunity for the cell, for the human organism, to attack back at HIV, because there's, the virus cannot uh, uh, so rapidly mutate these uh, membrane fusion proteins as compared to other parts of the HIV, which can rapidly mutate. And um, we recently solved the structure of a GP41 antigen here which, uh, and we have designed some novel antigens as potential vaccine candidates. And that GP41 antigen, it's in a pre-fusion state, reveals some of the key uh, antibody binding domains which are known to correlate with neutralizing antibodies that have been discovered in humans. And they present them in a very nicely long helical segment clearly available for reaction with the immune system. Now, I don't want to dance up and down too much. These antigens have been uh, tested in mouse. They make neutralizing antibodies in mouse. That's not a big deal. Uh, the rabbit studies are on the way. If we can get neutralizing antibodies in rabbit, then we'd start dancing a little bit. And Amgen has agreed to let us use their xenomouse, their humanized antibody technology, to test these. So I think they're great opportunities where crystallography is used in this project. Also, structural mass spectrometry to determine the conformational state of the antigens in solution. And uh, good old molecular biology, of course, is, is, is needed. In the systems biology area, we've recently started the 
Proteomic Center for AIDS and Drug Abuse, uh, PI with uh, Jonathan Karn and myself. Um, NIDA has allowed us to develop a number of pilot studies to understand what's the, uh, uh, what happens to the innate immune system in a chronic HIV inf infection setting, when there are co-infections, when there are drug abuse, how do these various factors interact, and we feel the only way to do to understand these various aspects of the system is by integrating different kinds of data sets, proteomics, and genomics. And we feel, as clearly do a lot of the speakers today, that one of the key functional uh, topologies of the cell are the protein interaction networks, and it provides not only a convenient, but a valuable reference point for understanding our omics data. We're very involved in the Clinical and Translational Science Center here at CASE. We, we run the Translational Technologies Corps. We're involved in many other centers. We're, we're involved in the renewal of the PSI, as I talked about. And uh, in terms of systems biology, uh, we've been fortunate to receive a supplement from NCRR to try to automate some of these platforms where genomics and proteomics data are integrated in the topology of the protein interaction networks. We've started an institute for personalized medicine uh, in the university. Uh, we're recruiting for a director for that right now. We have some great candidates who've been visiting. And faculty recruitment in the center is, um, uh, is occurring with, with intense ferocity, I hope. Nothing, nothing less than that. We are partnering with other departments and schools like the dental school molecular biology and microbiology, Department of Medicine, Department of Genetics, to recruit faculty from assistant professor to full professor level in all of these areas. Uh, we'd be happy to take your CVs at lunch if you'd like to apply for the positions. Um, that's all I have to say. Um, I want to thank you all for coming, and uh, I'm very excited about uh, today. And uh, so I'd like to introduce to Rob Ewing, or I guess Geary's going to do that. <laughs>